Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We've got a great guest today. We've got a topic that I think you're going to be finding very interesting and actually on point right now for everything going on in the country. But we're going to be talking about how inflation and interest rates are going to be affecting farmland. And for that, I've got a great guest for you. His name is Monty McIntyre. He's a senior executive vice president and branch manager of Five Points Bank in Hastings, Nebraska. Uh, for those of you that turn in regularly, you've seen Monty before. So, Monty, thank you for coming back on. Thanks for having me. Enjoy being here. Yeah, it's always, I learn so much, you know. Uh, actually, just so you know, Monty is my cousin, and so he's a great resource for me. So, I, every time I come back to Nebraska, I come and run over here and find a reason to do a video. And I think this one is very timely and very important for everybody out there because there's a lot of changes right now. There and, is. You know, it's, it's been, I've seen, I read earlier that, you know, Farmland has gone up 14% in 2022. Correct. I don't see that being sustainable. No. Yeah. The last two years, it's went up double di digits, and it's yeah. uh, probably going to be tough for it to sustain. I mean, there's a lot of uh, interest in farmland because of the higher commodity prices. You can get a better return on it, and it's a good hedge for inflation. Yeah. As farmland's another stable investment you can have, and it diversifies from your other financial assets that you mm -hmm. have. And it, it's just a, a good investment for the for the long run, and it's just uh, something you can see and it's real. You can go out and see it, and they're just they're not making any more farmland. It's <laughs> yeah, just, it's, it's uh, something you can actually go touch and feel, right? That's right. Yeah. And I read that it's been it's a better hedge against inflation than stocks, bonds, all that. Correct. So, some people now with the interest rates rising have a little bit of concern about having to borrow funds, what that's mm -hmm. going to cost them, if that will impact the value of the farmland. And I don't think it's going to have as big an impact as some people think it will, just because we're not going to be going as high on interest rates as they did back in the 1980s. Yeah. So historically, 7 8% more average normal interest rates. And back in the 80s, they got up to 16 20% interest rates. Uh, we might yeah. see some 7 8% interest rates here, but uh, that's not that high. and comparative to their other inputs with their higher fertilizer, fuel, seed, chemical expense, interest isn't really that big of a, an yeah. item right now. Right. So. so you think going on 2023, I mean, you're projecting out 2023, 2024, you think farmland's still gonna be a solid investment? I do because okay. of the, we've had drought conditions and we didn't raise a real big crop and that's why at harvest this year prices got higher mm -hmm. and they, they typically in a short crop year prices do get higher and they, they usually yeah. peak right now this time of year and then they'll probably uh, maybe fall off again a little bit but until we raise a big bumper crop I just see farmland you know the farm high commodity prices is going to keep the high farmland prices up there so yeah, our yields are down this year? Yes. Across the board? There's been a kind of a drought, and it's all over the, the Midwest and all over a lot of parts of the U.S. This is our third year of being in uh, uh, La Nina, mm -hmm. which is uh, usually have higher temperatures and less moisture. Yeah. Um, at Husker Harvest Days, I listened to the DTN uh, climatologist speak, and he, he believes that we'll switch next spring to an El Nino, which is more normal temperatures and more rainfall, which I hope is the case because our moisture profile on the land is uh, clear down, so we're going into this next spring being awfully dry. Yeah, so, so if you've had dry land that. crops, you've been struggling. Then. You have, and then they've been able to insure that and the, with the crop insurance, okay. so they've, they've been pretty fortunate to have uh, some good yields the last several years, so their APH is pretty good and they get paid off that. APH? Yeah, their so, average yield, like their five-year okay. average. Gotcha. Okay. So they get they can guarantee up to seventy to eighty percent of that, or whatever level they want. That's typically where most farmers okay. uh, do that. And then it goes off the spring and fall harvest price and the spring price off the crop insurance. And the spring for corn, it was five ninety. You could insure, and then for soybeans, it was fourteen thirty three. Okay. Now, are you saying that? Um, Irrigated crop, but those yields are stayed pretty strong though, right? They they have, and yeah. I would say on average around here, we've typically had 240, kind of an average yield, and I think we'll be closer to that 200 to 220 probably this year. Okay. It's gonna be down, so they won't have the extra bushels to sell like they typically do. But farm income's still gonna be strong. Uh, 2020 was really good because of the all the government payments that we received with the SBA PPP, yep. and, then the, and then the farmland payments. 2021 was a real good profitable year for net farm income 
Um, this year in 2022 is still going to be good, but not as good as last year, just because the input expenses are a lot higher. And we're still going to have high input expenses going into next year, but you can still lock in pretty good prices that are still profitable. The big impacts are going to be these land values going up, so real estate taxes are going up, and then the landowner is going to want to raise their cash rent. Right. So that's another input that's an expense that's going to go higher for the farmer. Yeah. Are you are you seeing people are still buying land and then leasing it out? They're buying as an investment then leasing it out? Yes, correct. Okay. There's still probably 80 to 90% of the lands farmer purchased. Okay. Farm purchase still. But there's still a lot of investors that do buy it and then they're looking for the best return. And of course, if they're paying more for the land, they're, they're wanting a better return. So they're looking for a organic or a, a seed corn producer, somebody that's willing to pay higher right. cash rent. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it, um, do you think that prices, I mean, if you had to project over the next couple of years, do you think it's just going to stabilize or come down, the land? I think the land will maybe not consistently go as high as it's been going, but I think it's still going to be steady to rising. Okay, that's impressive. What about ranch land? Are you seeing the same thing there? Yeah, ranch land has been pretty uh, high demand for that as well, that's and good. recreation land has been. So across the board, all different types of land has been pretty popular. Of course, your investor or the person looking for the best returns after the highest quality of land that's uh, around the best terminals that's going to get the best basis and return on their investment. If I'm an investor in, in ranch land, I'm looking, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a, the best type of grass, which is what? Yeah, hardier grass, okay. um, typical better, better soil. You're going to stay away from right. the sandier type soils. Um, but the hardier grass, you can usually pasture you know, four to eight acres for a cow-calf unit. Okay. And on the sandier type soils, it's gonna take 10 to 14 acres. Oh, So it just takes a lot more acres to pasture a cow-calf unit. And water, is there plenty of water still, or are you guys? There, there's still been good water around this area. Um, that's gonna be a going concern. And then yeah. I think that with uh, farmland as well, if there'll be more limitations with this drought, if, if they might limit people to more inches per year. Yeah. I could see that coming in, even in some districts that don't have any limitations right now. I was talking to somebody the other day and they said they were talking about the, um, I don't know if this is on the state or local level, but they were talking about how they're going to get have to meter their pumps yep. so they know how much water they're using. And I guess after a certain time, would they do shut it off and you can't run anymore or what would happen? They, they, they just they get taxed on their just get, Yeah. Okay. Penalized on it. You're only supposed to, like certain water districts, you only have so many inches, like say 15 inches that you can use per year and you can bank or depends on the year if you use that much and the other years that you don't use as much, you can bank it and use it down the road. Okay. So we'll, we'll probably see more of that, more restrictions on water use. I, I'll be honest, I really thought farm and ranch land, you might see a dip over the next couple of years. So that's, yeah. that's actually good news. I, I think as long as these commodity prices stay up, this, these land values will stay higher. I think once we raise that big bumper crop and then all of a sudden commodity prices go down, I think at that point we'll see a, a dip. Okay. It's just that the farmers right now are pretty strong. The balance sheets are, are in good shape. We yeah. had a strong commodity super cycle from 2007 to 2014 and that really healed up a lot of people and got the gotcha. a lot of the farmers in good shape and then from 2020 to 2022 here now um they should make some decent money again so just for instance in my farm customers that are operating funds typically mm -hmm. you're they're pretty well peaked in that august to september time frame before gotcha. they get their harvest income because they have all their inputs in their crop and out of my borrowings, I only had about 40% of my loans were tapped out to where I still had almost 60% available to, to lend out. So, yeah. so that tells you there's pretty strong farmers right now. So. Well, I was wondering, because I know you guys got, especially in this area, you guys got a good amount of hail this year. There was, yeah, there was a lot of problems this year with, um, like through the winter, they just didn't break down the stocks like we typically do. Mm -hmm. And the ground was hard to start the year with planting. Yeah. So they didn't get a real good stand in a lot of places. And besides that, we had a lot of wind and hail. So yeah. there's a lot of problems along with the drought. People here get it a lot more this year than they have in past years. And then uh, it was really warm during, or hot during pollination. So pollination didn't go real great either. And I think that's why we're not gonna see our normal good yields or even our average yields probably. Well, 
Well, Monty, thank you very much for that. I mean, I just, I think I'm going to find more. I'll be back around Christmas, so I'll have to do this again because I think everybody's going to want to hear this continuing information. So thank you for coming in and doing this today. Oh, thanks for having me. Always Amen. enjoy. And if you're in, in and around Hastings, or do you guys lend nationwide or do you just focus on Nebraska? We'll mostly focus on Nebraska. All right. Five so. Points Bank, Hastings, Nebraska, Monty McIntyre. Make sure you reach out to him if you have any questions. And make sure you do give us a like on this video. And if you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.